Welcome, Welcome to Own or Disown, where tech decisions are made easy. Hi, this is Stephen from Own or Disown, and my longtime subscriber, Eric. He asked me to investigate the relationship between desktop GPUs at different power levels and those of their mobile counterparts. Now, I do recall in the Pascal days, there was actually very little to separate desktop and mobile. But as the total graphics power levels increased on the desktop side, it actually went down on the mobile side. Now my GTX 1080 and my Clevo P970TM can run at, run at over 190 watts. And, and I also recall testing an Aorus laptop with a 2080 Super, and that ran at 200 watts. So it is clear that it is possible to make laptops that can run at 200 watts. But would we see much benefit if they could actually go any higher? Well, naturally, you know, we are thermally restrained in a laptop, so perhaps 200 watts is the max. But that is still at least 25 watts higher than what we see today. Also, of course, is the big bone of contention that NVIDIA naming scheme is confusing. We have to go, go all the way back to 2014 when they used the M moniker for mobile chips such as the GTX 980M. And myself and many of my subscribers wish that they would return to this, uh, to the average consumer could differentiate between the desktop 4080 and the mobile 4080. In fact, the mobile 4080 performs more like a desktop 4070, so it's actually one tier down. Now, in my testing for the desktops, I use the 4070, I use the 4080, uh, and the 4090. And for the laptops, I use my CyberPower Tracer 7 with a 4080 mobile and an Acer Helios 18 with a 4090 mobile. I use a resolution of 3440 by 1440 at pretty much max settings, just so I can minimize the CPU bottleneck. And I also used MSI Afterburner to lower the power percentage on the desktop cards. First up is the game control for the desktop 4070. I tested this card uh, using its uh, a native 190 watts all the way down to 110 watts and measured the average FPS. As you can see, performance starts to drop off at around about 140 watt mark, where it records 47 FPS. The mobile 4090 is more like the desktop 4080. So at 140 watts, that is 23% faster than the desktop 4070 at the same power. At 175 watts, the mobile 4080, which is the same as the desktop 4070, gets 57 FPS, which is 10% faster than the desktop 4070. Now one could uh, interpret this as a desktop card being less efficient at lower power, or the mobile card performing better at a higher power. In truth, it is probably a mixture of both. The laptop 4090 sees a 16% uh, improvement when it goes from 140 watts to 175 watts. The desktop card sees a 36% drop in frame rate when it goes from 190 watts down to 110 watts. And now for the desktop 4080, which is the same as the mobile 4090. At stock, it uses 320 watts and gets 83 FPS. It dropped the card all the way down to 150 watts, which is a 53% reduction in power, and this translates to a 49% reduction in frame rate. As you can see, the performance takes a serious nosedive at 220 watts. Although the desktop 4080 likes a lot of power, there are limiting returns in increasing it too far. And I suspect we would see the same if we were able to increase the power from 175 watts for the mobile GPU. We would probably hit a limit just north of 200 watts. So at 173 watts, the mobile 4090 gets 67 FPS, and at 175 watts, the desktop 4080 gets 53 uh, FPS. So that definitely shows that the, these chips need a certain amount of power to perform optimally. Heck, even the 4080 mobile, even at 175 watts, beats the desktop 4080 at the same power. Finally, let's look at the desktop 4090 and see how it gets on against the mobile 4090. At 173 watts, the mobile chip gets 61 FPS and the desktop version uh, also gets 61 FPS. As you can see, the desktop card really needs about 250 watts, but I do think if the mobile chip was able to push 200 watts, we would see a similar 74 FPS frame rate as the desktop chip. The second game I tested was Halo Infinite, using the single player. Now, for some reason, the game would crash with the desktop 4070, so here is the result of the desktop 4080. Comparing it to its mobile equivalent, the 4090, at 153 watts, the desktop gets uh, 137 FPS and the mobile chip got 159 FPS. So yeah, these desktop chips need a certain amount of power to run efficiently, and in this case the limit is about 190 watts. The mobile 4080 gets the same frame rate using only 10 watts more. 
I really would like to see the mobile chips at 200 watts. I would expect them to run similar to the desktop chips. Finally, we have the desktop 4090 that uses 320 watts as default and drops it all the way down to 140 watts. We see a massive drop off below 190 watts. At 140 watts, the desktop 4090 gets 137 FPS, whilst the mobile chip gets 146 FPS. At about 155 watts, the desktop gets 162 FPS, whilst the mobile 4090 gets 159 FPS, so pretty similar. But we start to see the trend that more power helps the desktop chip, more than the mobile version. But still, considering the mobile 4090 is really a desktop 4080, it is impressive. Please give the mobile chips more power, that's what I say. Now my subscriber Sean Wee said he has done some shunt mods on the mobile 4080 and the 4090. Now this mod increases the power to the GPU. Now he said he saw minimal gains for the 4080M, so 175 watts is optimal, while 225 watts was optimal for the 4090M. Now that's interesting. He says that 175 watts, the 4090M is basically like a Max-Q card. Now this is interesting information and confirms what I thought all along. Now if I recall the 4090M commanded about a $600 premium over the 4080. So the 10% increase in performance made no sense as they both used max 175 watts. However, give that 4090M 225 watts, then that premium would be more vile. Shawnee also said that the desktop requires more power because it needs to power the GPU fans, any RGB on board, and the display outputs are included in the power limits. Whilst for the mobile, it only needs to power the GPU and the VRAM. Now, Sean Wee also says that different laptops use different VRMs or voltage regulator module configurations. And due to VRM power loss, each will have a different max voltage. His ASUS SCAR18 has a 9 plus 3 VRM phase, which allows up to 250 watts with a 25 watt VRM power loss, giving a net 225 watts. Yet the MSI Titan 18 uses a 7 plus 2 VRM phase with a max power of 210 watts with a 40 watt VRM power loss with a net 170 watt power. This suggests that much depends on a laptop manufacturer and the way they configure the VRMs on the motherboard. But for sure, if we are paying top dollar for the top end uh, GPU Nvidia and the OEM should allow for increased power because it is clear that we would see some nice frame rate improvements. And I think particularly for the new 5000 series, it's clear that they definitely need more power. But then again, Nvidia wants us to use software like DLSS and frame uh, generation to increase performance. So why not just run it to 100 watts and use a bunch of simulated frames instead? Anyway, that's it from me. Let me know what you would like to see in the high-end gaming laptops in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Bye now.